When we think of Brazil, most people think about the beautiful landscapes and, of course, the Amazon forest. What we don't often think about is the thousands of years of history that the area carries. Sometimes, it takes for that history to come face to face with us, to remember it. And it's happened again. A prehistoric body has been found in Brazil intact, and it's got everyone terrified. Join us as we dig deeper into the finding and everything that's been unearthed in Brazil and how it's challenged long-standing theories the world has had forever. There is a human skull on display at the National Museum, which has recently begun attracting a lot of attention. This particular skull, which had been in storage for a period of 20 years, has undergone extensive examination by Brazilian scientists. Their findings have led to a groundbreaking revelation. This fossilized cranium is now officially recognized as the oldest human remains ever discovered in the Western Hemisphere. The emergence of the skull from storage to public display itself is a massive event. Its extended period in storage means that its historical and scientific significance may have been underestimated or not fully appreciated until now. But now that everything's out in the open, all of that is about to change. This is Lucia, the oldest woman of Brazil. She was originally discovered in 1974, and the discovery was made during a collaborative effort between French and Brazilian researchers who were conducting an archaeological expedition in the vicinity of Belo Horizonte, Brazil. The remains were found within a rock shelter, a type of geological formation that provided a natural protection for early human inhabitants. The state of preservation of the remains was remarkable, given their age and the conditions in which they were found. Although the skeleton was not found in its original articulated state, meaning the bones were not in their natural positions relative to each other, the skull was discovered totally separate from the rest of the skeleton. Despite this separation, the skull was surprisingly well-preserved, providing valuable insights into the physical characteristics of this ancient individual. What makes the discovery of Lusia particularly noteworthy is the depth at which the remains were buried. They were found beneath over 12 meters of mineral deposits and debris. This depth suggests that significant geological processes and layers of sediment have accumulated over time, effectively sealing and preserving the site. This unique preservation environment contributed to the exceptional condition of the remains. But gathering information about Luzia hasn't exactly been easy. There was a lot to uncover here. In 2013, scientists conducted radiocarbon dating on charcoal samples recovered from the layer of sediment associated with Lucia's bones. The results indicated that Lucia lived approximately 10,030 years ago, with a margin of error of around 60 years, give or take, which corresponds to a calibrated age range of 11,243 to 11,710 years ago. This places Lucia among the oldest known human skeletons in the Americas. But that's not all. Forensic analysis of Lucia's remains also provided insight into her age at the time of death, revealing that she passed away in her early 20s. Standing at just under five feet tall, Lucia was of relatively average height for a human of her time. Approximately one third of Lucia's skeleton has been recovered providing researchers with a partial but significant glimpse into her anatomy. Based on the available evidence, it is estimated that Luzia passed away at around 20 years of age. The cause of her death is believed to have been either an accident or an animal attack because she was otherwise healthy but injured. From her skeletal characteristics, scientists have also been able to theorize about Luzia's lifestyle and cultural affiliation. Based on how her remains were found, it is believed that she was a member of a group of hunter-gatherers. This implies that Luzia and her community relied on hunting for food, as well as gathering resources from their natural environment. This hunter-gatherer lifestyle was common among early human populations and characterized much of human existence before the advent of agriculture. Just because she died young doesn't mean they didn't live it to the fullest. One of the most interesting things here is that while flint tools were discovered in close proximity to Luzia's remains, 
She was the sole human found in Vermella Cave, suggesting that her presence in the cave was unique and that there may be further mysteries surrounding her burial or placement. But just as we were learning more about Luzia, tragedy struck. In 2018, a fire engulfed the National Museum in Brazil, and it was initially believed that Lucia's remains had been destroyed. However, firefighters later made an astonishing discovery. Lucia's skull was still intact, although the skull was found in a fragmented state, approximately 80% of the fragments, including portions of the forehead, nose, and side bones, were identified. Not just that, but a fragment of Lucia's femur, another key piece of her fossil, was also recovered. Lucia's facial features offer intriguing insights into the ancient populations that roamed the earth and what they looked like. Her cranium was characterized by its narrow and oval shape, with a projecting face and a pronounced chin. These features set her apart from the typical physical traits seen in most Native American populations, as well as their indigenous Siberian ancestors. Anthropologists have conducted comparative analyses to try and understand the affinities of Lucia's features. They have noted similarities between her facial characteristics and those of indigenous Australians, Melanesians, and the Negritos of Southeast Asia. These comparisons also provide clues about potential ancient migration patterns and connections between different human populations across continents. Walter Neves, an anthropologist affiliated with the University of Sao Paulo, played a significant role in studying and interpreting Lucia's remains. He proposed that Lucia's features bore the closest resemblance to those of Australian Aboriginal peoples. This observation suggests the possibility of ancient links or shared ancestry between populations in South America and Australasia, which could challenge the current understanding of early human migrations and interactions. The traditional theories have been that the first humans to inhabit the Americas were descended from populations in Northeast Asia who crossed the Bering Land Bridge during the last ice age around 15,000 to 20,000 years ago. This theory, known as the Beringian Migration Model, suggests a single major migration event into the Americas. If there were indeed ancient links or shared ancestry that we missed, it could indicate a much earlier and more intricate web of human migrations and interactions across different parts of the globe. This challenges the notion of a singular migration event and encourages a broader perspective on the peopling of the Americas which would mean that a lot of our history just isn't right. Walter Neves and other Brazilian anthropologists have put forth a theory that challenges traditional models of human migration into the Americas. According to their hypothesis, Lucia's Paleo-Indian predecessors may have resided in Southeast Asia for tens of thousands of years after migrating from Africa. From there, they proposed that these populations began arriving in the New World as early as 15,000 years ago. This theory suggests a much longer period of habitation in Southeast Asia before any potential migration into the Americas. It implies that these populations could have developed distinct regional cultures, technologies, and adaptations during their extended stay in Southeast Asia prior to their eventual dispersal across the Pacific. The oldest confirmed archaeological site in the Americas, known as the Monteverde site, dates back to approximately 18500 to 14500 years before present in southern Chile. This site predates the proposed arrival of Lucia's predecessors in the New World, further supporting the idea of early human presence in the Americas. Some anthropologists have speculated on potential migration routes for these ancient populations, one hypothesis proposes that a population from coastal East Asia might have used boats to travel along the Kuril Island chain, the Beringian coast, and then down the west coast of the Americas during a period of declining glaciation known as the Last Glacial Maximum. In 1998, Walter Neves and archaeologist André Proust conducted a study that dated Lucia's skull to approximately 11 through 400 years old, providing further evidence for the ancient age of these remains. 
While there is proof to support these studies, not everyone agrees with Walter. The scientists Rolando Gonzalez Jose, Frank Williams, and William Armalagos have studied Lucia's remains. They believe that the different shapes of Lucia's skull and face may be due to natural genetic changes and other factors that affect how skulls and faces develop in Native American groups. Their research implies that the unique features of Lucia's skull may not necessarily indicate a distinct ancestral connection to Australo-Melanesian populations. In November 2018, new research emerged from scientists at the University of Sao Paulo and Harvard University that challenged the proposed Australo-Melanesian origin of Lutzia. This study employed DNA sequencing techniques, revealing that Lucia's genetic profile was entirely Amer Indian, aligning her ancestry more closely with Native American populations. This information also suggests that there have been potential connections or shared ancestry between these individuals and ancient populations in different parts of the Americas, not limited to Lucia alone. But what do you think? Was Lucia just one in a million? Or could we have been wrong about how humans migrated this whole time? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. We'll see you in the next one.